Hey Google, how do you pronounce charcuterie? That's pronounced charcuterie. You're right. Hey guys, it's Lauren, and for those of you out there that know me, you know that I am obsessed with cheese. So today we're going to be making one of my favorite things to eat, a charcuterie board. So believe it or not, making a charcuterie board is actually super simple. There's really no rhyme or reason or one way to make it. You can kind of just make it your own. So even though there aren't really any rules to making a charcuterie board, there's still a few items that you're definitely going to want to have. At the base of your charcuterie board, you're always going to want to have your cheese, meat, and crackers. So I've included a triple cream brie. Brie is my all-time favorite cheese, and I never make a charcuterie board without it. Then I also have a red wine cheese, an aged gouda, and a goat cheese. Then as far as your meats go, again, it doesn't really matter. I just like to try and have some variety. So today I have a dry salami, a peppered salami, my personal favorite, prosciutto, and then some smoked salmon. That's nice to have if you have people who don't like eating dried meats. And of course, you can't forget the crackers. So today I have a multi-grain cracker and a gluten-free cracker. And sometimes I also like to include an everything bagel cracker. That's super tasty and a way to just kind of up your charcuterie board. So finally, for some extra pizzazz and flair, you can also add some fruits and nuts to your board. So what I have here today are some craisins. I also have a few grapes to add in there, Marcona almonds, and some honey just to put on top of your goat cheese because they pair really well together. Once you've grabbed everything that you need, let's get started. Also, just a pro tip, I like to have a separate cutting board that I cut all of my cheeses and meats on first before putting them on the display board. And there you have it guys, happy eating!